Welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, got a nice, easy, short example for you. Uh, and what we're going to do is, we got a ring. Let's say it's charged up. We're going to find the voltage as a function of x along the axis um, of, the, of the ring. So imagine a line running through the center of the ring outward. We're going to find voltage as a function of x. A um, couple of notes uh, I'll make about this. If you get really far away, the voltage should kind of act like a point charge. Um, if you get close, the voltage should just be what? Well, if you're at the center of the ring, where is all the charge? Well, all the charge is the radius of the ring away. So it's acting almost like a point charge at that point. All the charge is R away, so the voltage should be KQ over R if we're at the dead center of the ring. So one of the things to look for here is that. Also, once we have voltage, it turns out that it's really, really easy from the voltage equation to then determine the electric field created by the ring. It's two steps or so, and that's it. So we're going to try that out. Um, recall from a couple chapters ago, we found the electric field created by this ring um, by using the in k integral dq over r squared in the r hat direction. Now it turns out for a ring that's not that hard, um, but it still takes a couple lines of work and a little bit of thought. Um, if you have the voltage of the ring, finding the electric field is, is somewhat easier. All right, so let's start with the ring. Here's the center of it. It's got a radius r, and we are going to be some fixed distance x from the ring's center. So again, here's the center of the ring. We are like here. Okay, we're out there somewhere. All right. Well, um, there's two ways to find voltage. Okay. One way is to say change in voltage equals negative the integral e dot uh, d, in this case, dx. Okay. You can use that if you know the electric field created by the ring. Ah, pop quiz. What's the electric field created by a ring? I don't remember either. So um, instead, now by the way, this is a good method if you know E. But since we don't know E, the other method is voltage in general, absolute voltage, is uh, K, the integral of dQ over R. Um, and we're going to use that in this particular case. Okay, so that's the first thing you got to figure out is which of those two methods should I use to find our voltage. For this particular example, we'll use that one. Um, okay, so voltage is K, the integral of dQ. Well, what's R? In other words, exactly how far is the charge from our point in space? Well, the charge, like let's say we look at a little, little chunk of charge right there, it is this distance R from that point. You might notice that that distance is the same for every single chunk of charge. Whether I look at that chunk there, or that chunk there, or that chunk there, those, those distances are always the same. So that distance is simply, if you draw a right triangle here, uh, R squared is X squared plus big R squared. So R is simply root big R squared plus x squared, okay? So the only variable is dq. Well, what's the integral of dq? It's just q. So the voltage created by the ring is simply kq over root r squared plus x squared. One, a couple notes about this. One, nice equation to use because you don't have to worry about adding vectors unlike with electric fields where you have to worry about r hat. There is no r hat here, okay? Um, number two, you get a real easy result. Uh, does, it, does it add up to what we said it should be? Well, if you're dead center of the ring, in other words, if you make x zero, what happens? Well, if you make x zero here, you get a voltage is kq over big R. You got root big R squared, which just becomes big R. Um, so there's your voltage. Now, uh, the last thing we'll do is using the voltage, we will determine the electric field created by the ring. Now, um, we're basically using this, solving for E. E in the x direction is negative dV dx. 
So all we got to do is take the derivative of this with respect to x. Now what I'll do is I'll rewrite this voltage equals kq, that's a constant, and then this becomes r squared plus x squared to the negative one half. So that's just rewriting this in a nice easy version. If I do e in the x direction, which is negative dv dx, you get negative kq. Um, you do the power rule on this, so you do r squared plus x squared okay, to the negative, you subtract one from that, negative three halves, okay, um, all over, uh, oh, and then times, sorry, not, not over, but times this, which is negative a half, okay, um, and then times the derivative of the inside of this with respect to x, which is simply 2x. So you take, you do the power rule, you take negative a half, um, times this, the negative 3 halves, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. Uh, the half and the 2 drop out. You get a negative there, a negative there, they drop out. And you get the following equation. Um, you get kqx over big R squared plus x squared to the 3 halves. Um, now, if you recall from the previous chapter, or a couple chapters ago, uh, this was a little tougher to get uh, doing the method that we did back then, which was, and I'll just remind you of that, we did e in the x direction was k, the integral of dq over r squared r hat. So a couple chapters ago we were doing this. Well, now we use this to get the electric field, and it's much easier, assuming you already have the voltage. So I hope that was, uh, was helpful and enjoy the very short example.